What is up, most distinguished welders? <laughs> so today I'm going to do the first in what hopefully will turn out to be a series of videos, and it's called Questions from the Toolbox. And in front of us, we have a toolbox, although I'll be honest, it's probably the smallest toolbox you've ever seen, so thus small questions can only fit in here. But no, seriously, uh, I'm going to take the time to answer questions that people ask about things that maybe I don't want to spend the time doing a whole video on, like a long format video, and things that I may not have access to. Because I like, if someone asks me a question, I like to sit down and actually use what they're talking about or test things. And there are certain things out there that I can't test either for financial reasons or I can't get access to it, but I can surely have an opinion on it or we can learn something about it. So today's question is actually not really associated to anyone, but a few people have asked, and that is, what are torpedo welders? What is the deal with them, and what they're used for, and why people like them, and why do they look weird? So that's what we're going to be tackling today. Let's get into it. So the torpedo welders fall under a really obscure category of welders that are unlike anything else. And even though they weld and, and <laughs> they stick weld, by the way, uh, you would think, oh, well, it's just a normal welder. Well, that's where you'd be wrong. So they function more like what you would find in an engine drive welder. And what I mean by that is the, the section that outputs power along with all the controls are very similar to what a SA200 or similar engine drive would uh, from, you know, say the 50s and on up, okay? So they function more like that. And the reason I say that is, is that if you take an SA200, which is an engine drive generator welder, and you have three parts, you have the engine, you have a DC generator, and then you have the controls and all of the outputs and the reactor and all of that. Well, the torpedo welder, they came up with the bright idea, well, why don't we take all the components of that SA200 or similar welder, and instead of driving it with an engine, we'll drive it with an electric motor. And I know you're asking yourself, why on earth would you drive a generator welder with an electric motor instead of just creating something like the Dial Art 250 I have, where it just plugs in a wall and with some transformers, you get a uh, proper output, okay? So a normal transformer welder, you have essentially a couple transformers, a bridge rectifier to create DC from that AC current that's plugged into, and then boom, your output is DC and that's it. Well, there's certain advantages to the way that generator welders work. The primary one being is that the duty cycle is essentially almost unlimited at reasonable current levels. When you look at like the Dial R250 that I have at uh, max output, it might be able to hit 30, 40% duty cycle at like 250 amps and a little bit above that. Some of those uh, torpedo welders could achieve, you know, 250 amps at 100% duty cycle without any concern. So the duty cycle generally was a lot better with them. The other interesting fact is, is that uh, a lot of those old engine drive welders, they did not have what would be known as kind of like an alternator where it produces AC current that's rectified into DC to weld with. They actually use DC output generators that would give you the ability to have, with, without rectification, very clean DC output. And what I mean by that is, is that if you've ever welded with an old engine drive welder, uh, the common thing people say is you get very smooth, just it's, it's just a smooth arc. Well, that's because the output of the generator is DC, and then they use what's called a reactor to just clean that up a little bit. So you get basically almost pure DC output, far cleaner than what you would expect out of uh, say a dial art 250 so that is why you know it's a very desirable art characteristic that you get out of those and you simply with the technology that was available during the 50s and 60s you couldn't get that level of clean dc output with duty cycle out of a transformer based machine 
The other thing that's quite interesting too with them is that the efficiency, and I haven't tested one personally, but I bet the efficiency, electrically speaking, is actually far better with those for output than you would find with like a dial arc or a big industrial welder. And that has to do partially with the power factor, uh, which I'm not going to go too in depth on that in this video, but the electric motor is probably more efficient than the transformer. So it's better on power factor and there's less loss through the system because you don't have five transformers, a bridge rectifier and a uh, reactor to smooth the DC out in like a dial arc. You eliminate most of the components of that so it's not only a simpler design, but it gives cleaner output more efficiently. So that's another reason why I think that those were quite popular back in the day, because there's a lot of benefits to it. Now, from using one of those in the home, well, the, the ones that literally look like a torpedo and are the size of a 55-gallon garbage can, those I don't think you're going to be running in your household anytime soon. The electric motor being three-phase on them is simply too... Uh, requires too much power to even feasibly power on a VFD in your home. Now the smaller upright ones, the fire hydrants, those, some of them were available in single phase motors. Uh, some of them that are three phase, they're small enough motors to where you could run a VFD in your home, program it, and on single phase in a VFD, three phase out, you could actually run one of those and weld with it. Would you really want to? Probably not. Uh, honestly, the modern technology, uh, I would say, is probably far more useful, far more portable, and that's a lot of work to go through for probably minimal gain, although you do get about as clean a DC as you can get out of anything older than like the last five, six years for manufacturers, so that's a plus. Now, another interesting caveat to the torpedo and the fire hydrants because they work more like a SA200 and you have multiple gears or current ranges, you can do interesting things with that that you can't do with a normal stick welder. And what I mean by that is when you adjust the current ranges, like it's say a 250 amp machine, you might have five to seven current ranges, but a lot of them overlap. The benefit of having different current ranges is you have what's called different voltage to amperage curves. So by selecting, say, one range, we'll just give an example, is like 70 to 150. And then you have another current range that's, say, I don't know, 50 to 100. And again, this is just an example. So you have overlapping current ranges. What you can do is in the lower current range, you might only have, say, 26 volts. In the upper current range for that range, the next one up, you might have, say, 35 volts available. In very, very simple terms, it changes how it reacts when you lengthen the arc, and it changes the, how much voltage and how long of an arc you can keep, and it also changes how it welds on an open route. So, it's, it's, you can tailor the way the arc works. On a normal transformer-based welder, you cannot do that. Like the dial arc I have or anything even similar to that, you can't change the voltage amp curve uh, at all, okay? Other than if you, they typically will have two gears where you have high and low, but that's for all practical purposes with like eighth inch rods, you have no control over that. So that's again why pipeliners really like those engine drive, the old school engine drive welders, because they can change how 6010 runs to get the performance they want. And that's unlike a normal uh, transformer based welder. Now, modern welders could possibly mimic that, and I know like the newer engine drives out there, they often have pipe welding modes, and even though they no longer have gears or adjustable ranges, it's all done either digitally or through control of the generator. It's a lot different today, but again, this is old school technology, so it just gave you better ability to dial in the arc the way you want. And, and I guess even simpler put, the voltage amp curves can really affect the liquidiness of the puddle. So you can have a less liquid puddle or a more liquid puddle, a harsher arc or a softer arc. It just, it, 
There's a reason that pipeliners use those old school welders because they are phenomenally good for welding, uh, especially downhill uh, with rods like 6010, far better than a lot of the modern equivalents. So with that said, I think you learned enough. Let's go to conclusion. So hopefully you learned something about those old clunkers that uh, you may see at a shipyard near you, even though there aren't any more shipyards anymore, hardly. But uh, definitely an unconventional welder style, and I thought I would cover that for today's topic simply because how few people uh, actually know about them or what they do, how they weld, and why people actually desire that. So pretty interesting stuff. And with that said, thanks for sticking around for the video. Until next time.